I'm Data, and today I'd like to showcase a new and improved hyper-threaded cyclical variable sorter, a sorter designed to handle high-variance box inputs. In front of me is one of the two wide slices. In comparison to the old design, it's only one block longer while being the same height. In case you don't know what cyclical variable sorting is, I highly encourage you to watch my previous video on version 1, where I explain the theory behind the sorter as well as its general concept. The primary way this sorter is faster than the previous version is that on average we use more of the sorters at the same time. So the previous version would work like this. We would start a cycle and then eventually it would fill up all of the available sorters. Then the cycle is going to start to finish and we'll filter out the last couple of boxes and then all of the sorters are clear again so we'd start the next cycle. But if I roll back in time a little bit We can see here that these four sorters are entirely inactive for the finishing, uh, for the finishing cycle, or the tailing end of the cycle. And these sorters here won't be reactive until the next cycle starts. But when the next cycle starts to use these four sorters, now these four sorters are inactive. But what we could do is have the tail end of this cycle running at the same time as the head end of the next cycle. So we also probably wouldn't want these two cycles to accidentally merge with each other. So we can just have one inactive sorter instead of having uh, up to seven inactive sorters. So what will happen is that as this cycle here on the right side starts finishing, we'll be able to move along and start using the resources for the next cycle. And now there's no more red cycle, so we can just work on entirely on the blue cycle. And then as the blue cycle starts finishing, we can start working on the red cycle. And we can essentially chain that along. So what that means is that our maximum uh, sorting speed is only ever going to dip to be one inactive sorter. Rather, rather than the previous, you know, this many inactive sorters. So now let's see the hyper-threading in action. I'm going to be using this shulker box here to demonstrate. So we're going to put in a couple of copies of this box. And we can see that the first slice here has been activated, and it has been mapped to polished granite. And now the next... The next sorter here is going to be mapped to polished diorite. And if I tick warp just a little bit, so let's tick warp 500 this time. Okay, so now we've started pushing through and we've activated every single cycle. So now we're filtering out the spruce logs here. And if we look here at the start though, We've already reset to the stripped uh, acacia logs just here. So this here is the head end of the second cycle, but we're still working on the first cycle over here. And that's essentially how the hyperthreading works. So if we look at the top from the top here, a lot more of the sorters would be um, are active at any given moment. So in this case, we have two sorting wires are are active and then, in that case, a couple of sorting wires were active. So it's not always going to be the maximum uh, amount of sorting speed that's possible. Um, and that's just a virtue of this here being serialized. If you're interested in a logical explanation of what happens within the slice, then I've linked an unlisted video in the, de in the description below. I'm still working on improving the quality of my logical explanations and my redstone explanations, so any form of feedback uh, in terms of that would be really, really helpful for me. Anyhow, that concludes my video showcasing the hyperthreaded cyclical variable sorter. As always, the world download will be available in my Discord server link below. It's just significantly more convenient for me, so thank you for bearing with that. Included in the world downloaded are our color coded, <laughs> sorry, our color coded brief explanations of each circuit. If you have any questions, then I also encourage you to ask them in the aforementioned Discord server. It's just a much better platform for understanding questions and understanding answers, as opposed to the YouTube comment system. 
Also, I absolutely must give out some special thanks to Repscallion, Metamilo, Samos, and Masantic. They all helped me formulate lo uh, logic diagrams and work through various iterations, as well as compacting the actual redstone, as well as helping me improve uh, storage tech in general. And all of their channels are going to be linked below as well. And before I end off, I'd like to let you know that I've recently been accepted by Hammer and Melantech, and I'm really grateful for these opportunities, and I really hope to do some really uh, fun and uh, uh, interesting things uh, as a part of their servers. And their respective Discord servers will also be linked below. And finally, before this conclusion is longer than the video itself, thank you, the viewer. I've been getting a whole ton of support lately, and it's honestly been a little bit mind-boggling. I'm just really thankful for... Uh, you guys letting me uh, share something that I love. So uh, I really don't know how else to say it. Um, I sincerely hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.